Anti-Israel protesters flying the Hezbollah flag. Yep, that's what it looks like. Right in front of the New York Stock Exchange, chanting death to America, I know, in various languages while marching through the streets. <laughs> Unbelievable. Protesters jamming up traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge. Some even burning the American flag. Look at that. So sad. Meanwhile, on the other side of the country in San Francisco, 40 activists were arrested after shutting down the Golden Gate Bridge for about five hours. Another group blocked several sections of the freeway around the Bay Area as things ground to a halt. Uh, how upsetting is that? What if you had to get to work? What if you have a baby in the car with you? What if you had to catch a flight? Yeah, this is in Chicago, O'Hare. Travelers heading there to the O'Hare International Airport were first to dra forced to drag their luggage down the highway after the protesters completely blocked access to the main terminal. 54 people were arrested there. So what we saw yesterday coast to coast was a coordinated effort by a group of uh, protesters. It was called the A15 protest for April 15th. They chose tax day, uh, essentially demanding the United States stop using tax money to support and fund Israel and help the people of Gaza. President of the United States wouldn't even talk yesterday. He's sitting there with the Prime Minister of Iraq reading off cards. How hard would it have been to say, you know, I'm getting reports of a, of a jammed up uh, a Golden Gate Bridge. I'm getting reports of the Wall Street uh, being overwhelmed by protesters. <clears throat> I'm getting reports of some outrageous statements being made at Chicago get togethers, where I think ostensibly was a Teamster meeting. And this anti American sentiment's got to stop. How hard would that have been to even jot it down in a card to say, you may have different opinions about foreign policy, but can we all agree that the country uh, should you shining death to America should be a non-starter to people that want to stay here? So Ainsley, obviously, <clears throat> we all support peaceful protests. 100. percent but, but we got people obstructing traffic. Not only that, we have people that are spewing rhetoric that is anti-American. They're they're representing flags that are direct threats to this country. I told the story earlier about the Jewish friend of mine who sent me. Uh, a photo of the protest yesterday and told me that you have folks there saying all Jews, Jews must die. This is a guy that hated Donald Trump, but he says if this is the way that the party is going to be, then he has to vote for Trump. If the Democratic Party is going to be hijacked by people that, that spew rhetoric mm -hmm. that is pro Hamas, pro Hezbollah, then you know what? This is what we're going to do. Yeah, I mean, it is a free country. You are allowed to protest. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this is not against the law. You can burn the flag, but it's so sad knowing that our grandfathers fought for this great country. Um, and so many young men and women, we asked them to go across the, the sea to go fight for our country. And that's how we're, they are repaid. Here's a person flying a terrorist organization flag down the streets of New York. It's hard for us to wrap our minds around how they can have this mentality. You have right. two senators, Marsha Blackburn and Tom they they have introduced a law because right. it should be illegal to stop traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge or on the Golden Gate Bridge. So they're they're trying to make it a federal crime to purposely obstruct police roads and highways. Many of those people might have needed to go to the hospital. What if a woman's delivering a baby in the back of the car because she can't get to the hospital? Um, it just poses a very serious danger. Well, I asked Andy McCarthy how legal this is, and he just he says this: under the First Amendment, people are allowed to brandish flags of terrorist organizations. But I would say Hamas and Hezbollah have been formally designated as foreign terrorist organization in the U.S. for about 30 years, which means it's a serious felony to give them material support. So if you're supporting them, you have a case to scoop them up. Well, and I would love to know who's paying these people, because there's no way you get up in the morning the and go, Hezbollah really makes a lot of sense to me. I love the rockets on civilians. It really resonates. Well, it's one thing if you're taking up the bike lane like the person flying the Hamas flag is right there, but when you stop traffic, you know, on a main artery. We've seen it in Washington We've seen, we, all the time. And, and we see it out there. And obviously, the California cops, they let those people sit there for five hours. But ultimately, uh, they arrested a bunch of people. They charged them with conspiracy because it was coordinated. They also charged them with false imprisonment because there were drivers who were trapped on the bridge. But here's the thing. I think part of this probably uh, backfired because how many people caught up in the traffic yesterday on their side but they missed a meeting but they want or they, this or they missed something else they missed a flight but they want they, coverage they 
I understand, Brian, but it's the like-minded people who are like, did they have to do it the day I needed to get I, to O'Hare? I am just wondering, are these parents looking at the coverage of this? Are you seeing your kids? We this should get close-ups. We they should get close-ups. In, indoctrinated on the college campuses. You're paying for it. You need to have a real conversation on how we had 9-11, and now you have your kids sympathizing with a terrorist organization that wanted to destroy this country. I mean, where did we go wrong? Maybe it's all this wokeness and gender studies some stuff. Parents, We're not teaching them the history. Some of their parents are preaching these messages at home. Well, and yeah. ultimately, these are all in soft on crime cities where they know, okay, I'm going to get arrested. They're going to put me in zip ties. I'm going to go downtown. It's going to take five minutes. I'm going to be out, uh, unfortunately. But, but then at the same time, there were protests down in Florida. Why are we not talking about those? Because they got the arrested. Cops, the cops immediately took, uh, took action. Uh, in downtown Tampa, Traffic was stopped for about 15 minutes. In Miami, some protesters were dragged off the streets by the cops. It's like, this is a street. This is not where you protest. You're going to get run over. How can 40 people safety. shut down the Golden Gate Bridge? That's an embarrassment to the San Francisco cops. Here's, the speak Here's Speaker Johnson uh, 30 minutes ago. What's so shameful about all this, for all the obvious reasons, is that we're turning our back on Israel, our critical ally and, and important friend. Uh, but, but the most shameful part about it, I'm, I'm afraid, is the, the silence that you hear from Washington. There's so many leading Democrats who refuse to speak out about this. And, you know, I think they're appeasing the pro-Hamas wing of their party now, and that's a serious problem. We need to stand with Israel unequivocally. I spoke to my counterpart, the Speaker of the Knesset, Speaker Ohana, about uh, 36 hours ago or so, and he thanked me and us, the Republicans and others who have stood strong with Israel with our voices, and, uh, and he's, that's a very important thing for them. I spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu about a week ago, uh, and he expressed the same sentiment. We, we've got to stand strong. We've got to tell the world and show the world that Israel is not alone here. There's still been no condemnation from the leadership in the Democratic Party when it comes to Congresswoman Tlaib, who has chanted from the river to the sea, who has people in her district calling for death to America. There has she been no consequences. I think Moskowitz has in it's New York. It's about time. Yeah, because he's Jewish. Uh, Senator Schumer, you would think, uh, would be speaking yeah. out, too, as the most powerful Jewish American uh, to ever hold this high or of Kamala office. Kamala Harris. Never says anything about no. New York. Or Kamala Harris. She's mayor. Her husband's Jewish. Oh, that's right. But he had a lot of words for uh, Bibi. He had a lot of words about a ceasefire, but nothing. These people are such cowards. They won't call people out in their own Because they're all about politics. Exactly. Which... But they, they were so willing to get rid of Santos, who right. hadn't been tried yet. Uh, you can say about the allegations all day, but nothing had been proven in the court of law. Meanwhile, it's okay. Okay for to leave to do right. what she she does. Well, you know what? Uh, given the fact that we're talking about all the protests yesterday, and every other channel is talking about all the protests, it's in every newspaper. They're going to do it again, right? Yeah, they and are. they're going to do it again and again and again until Joe Biden does exactly what they want. And apparently, he's not going. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.